I've been getting a lot of comments dealing with the enclosure. And since this is more of an educational channel, we will try adding a circular insert to the turbine housing. So we'll say 269 watts with a single jet, which I can run reliably in bulk MPPT mode with a battery around 12.9 volts. I think the output voltage does affect it. Windage is a serious issue that has to be dealt with with turbines of this type. You can see in there, water is hitting the turbine after coming out of the jet, interacting with the turbine, hitting the back housing, bouncing off, and landing on the spoons and getting hit again. That's drag. So what I'm gonna try to do is mitigate that drag from even occurring in the first place by creating a circular housing which will allow the water to either go around in the circle or fall down more easily instead of getting bounced back by a corner. The, you, can, you can see it more easily there. The camera just doesn't do a very good job. Let's see if we can do it in uh, high speed mode. That worked pretty good. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. I just took the chute off the bottom of it. And we can see here this plywood is not straight anymore. And that was messing with my jet alignment. I've had to redraw that hole a few times. It's now clear once I took that off that it's been bowing. Uh, so this is a good exhibit of why plywood is not a good material to make a turbine housing out of. And I know that. It's just a temporary housing because I haven't gotten around to building a stainless one yet. And this is the liner that I use. It's just a bit of a barrel from an old water softening system. I did cut it and splice it and screw it to the walls of the housing and I also drilled two holes for the nozzles to stick through. And then I screwed the funnel back on the bottom. Okay, we'll turn the pressure back on. Remember this is a inch and a half line that runs up 750 feet up the hill to a spring that's 275 feet elevation above where I am flowing up to 30 gallons per minute, but that nozzle is somewhere around 12 to 15 gallons per minute. Okay, we'll turn the pressure on slow so we don't shock anything too quickly. Create pressure spike due to water hammer. A little bit faster. Okay, let that settle out. Wow, you guys can't see that there. There we go. I don't have the load connected, so it's gonna freewheel. there is acting like there was a short may have actually been a short all right water is hitting the back wall here and spinning around you guys can see that I'll move my arm so you can get some more Sun in there it does appear to be working very well keeping the water off of the turbine we can see it a lot more clearly down in there Still got a little bit of bubbles coming through. Those are bubbles right there. Let's try doing a slow motion of that. Oh, silly me. I remember what was happening. It was just, uh, I left the charge controller on and when it turns on immediately, it has an insomnia mode for hydro. So when it loses power and it turns back on, it goes right back to where the maximum power point was. And that's why it was kind of fluctuating a little bit. So let's turn on our load to get this back into 
uh, bulk MPPT or a MPPT mode and see how many watts we're making. All right, I just turned it off and I noticed a, a big change here. This was at like 129, 132 volts and now we're up to 142 volts. So it's freewheeling faster, which would mean there's less water hitting it. So let's turn this on. And it'll do a sweep and see what the maximum power point is. Okay, it looks like it's settled out. I'm going to let those bearings warm up and let the whole thing settle in and we'll see what it does in about an hour. All right, it has settled down and warmed up. And we can see it's averaging, I'm going to say it's averaging 277. It's fluctuating a lot, you see, on the same jet in the same orientation with the same setup. So that's picked up about 8 watts. Yeah, pretty good. Worth it. Probably worth it more when there's more water flowing. But I don't have enough water right now to test more water. I was walking around the corner and I was like, man, that's really quiet. In the corner of my garage. You can see the, the lid's open. It's running. It's making 260, 270 watts now. Let's see what this looks like. That That's interesting. Okay. You see that water splashing back right there? in the water there. So clearly water's getting splashed back and has some velocity coming back around here. But the wind from the turbine is coming this way and it's colliding right here. So that's, that's interesting. Let's see what the other nozzle does. Looks like we have a decent vortex of water coming around there. I don't know if there's a whole lot of water really staying off of the turbine. It looks like there's still a lot splashing around inside. You kind of see it on the back side right there. Oh, now it's going faster because the, the controller's like, wow, there's a lot of water. I see a lot of water splashing off on the side there and there. And a little bit there. And I wonder if if I make this um, liner a little bit shorter to let any water hitting the top splash back and away, that'd probably get the water out of the turbine housing and into these pockets in the corners. I should get my heat gun and see if I can clear up that plastic. It's a little bit cloudy. So there you have it, water flow and water handling is one of the major problems of a Pelton because it shoots water off both sides and you have to have the alternator on one side. A common orientation for a Pelton is actually with the axis rotated and that's how I had it initially in my first tests. The only problem with that is there's a lot of water that gets up against the seal for the alternator and destroys it, especially with this model of alternator. 
which has had problems. Uh, Chris Harbour had problems with water getting through the seals when he had it oriented in the horizontal axis orientation. Uh, a common solution to that is to run a turgo turbine, T-U-R-G-O. And that deals with the water coming in at an angle, hitting a spoon and directing down in the opposite direction. So you have your water flowing down through it and exiting the bottom, staying away from the seals of your alternator. So that's an ideal orientation, an ideal solution, but the angles make it a little bit more complicated. Also in my case, I'm going to be replacing this with a stainless steel housing that has the, the angles built in, so it should work a lot better at handling water, and we'll see that once I get it built. But for now, like, comment, subscribe, and check out my links for Amazon and Patreon and PayPal down below. I noticed that only 10% of my viewers are actually subscribers, so that's a large discrepancy for those who are not currently subscribed, so go hit that button, and don't miss future videos in this series. That is all. Goodbye. Have a good day. Stay safe. Gotta do it slow so we don't like pressure shock anything. Just like that. Let's not pressure shock it.